Hi, I'm chef, restaurant owner, and massive music fan, Paul Ainsworth, and this is Knives, Forks and Cheese, the podcast where we ask the all-important questions, dream dinner party menu, playlist, and of course, who's invited. Every episode's cooking tips and party playlists are available in the show description. My guest this week is none other than the incredible Jeanette Manrara. Dancer, choreographer, TV presenter, known for being on eight series of Strictly Come Dancing and recently announced as the new host for It Takes Two. Jeanette, welcome. Can I just use that as an intro every time I walk into a room? That was a nice <laughs> intro, wasn't it? That was a heck of an I intro. Just, every time I walk in, I'm just going to have Paul say that when I arrive. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm so good. I'm so excited to be here because I love food and I love music. So this is a perfect combination, right? It's, it's a pretty good podcast, yeah. isn't it? Food and music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, you've come to dancing quite late. I've been reading all about you, and you're you're a bit of a clever clogs. Uh, well, Florida I mean, University, I'll take finance. It. Yeah. I mean, you, <laughs> like, yeah, I started when I was twelve in musical theater. Like, honestly, because I wouldn't shut up around the house. I just was always putting on shows for my family, yeah. and would not stop talking. I was really bossy as a little girl, making all my cousins and my younger siblings do things that I wanted them to do for the show, of course, that yeah. we we're putting on for the family. Uh, so when I was twelve, my mom put me into this mu- musical theater program that was connected to a TV station called Univision, Univision. It's basically like the BBC of Latin America. It's yeah. a huge TV network in all the Latin American countries. <clears throat> and and I feel like my, my TV career really started then. I've always been really comfortable talking, really comfortable in front of the camera, really comfortable dancing. Photographs, I get a bit nervous, <laughs> funnily <laughs> enough. But when it comes to dancing and singing and acting, yeah, I'm, I'm completely in my room. And I've never looked back since I was 12. Now, I know you are super busy. Like I've like d- done my research, you, you know, you live a very, very busy life, you know, life in that fast lane. Do you have time for dinner parties? Do you know what? I'm not going to lie, Paul. I think especially during lockdown in the last year and a half, I have fallen in love with the kitchen yeah. and hosting a nice dinner party. Because only recently we've been able to start seeing friends and family yeah. and gathering. And we got to that awful, who are the six yeah. <laughs> that can <laughs> that can come. And because all we could do was dinner parties, I've kind of enjoyed doing it. But I've got a big secret. Well, it's not really a secret, but a confession to make. I cannot cook. Really? <laughs> no. I love eating food. I love yeah. hosting. I love having people over. And thank God for Deliveroo or Just Eat because yeah. I cannot cook for the life of me. So maybe you'll give me some really great tips I can oh, take away today. Fantastic. That does surprise me because I thought with such a like such a fitness regime and being as fit as you have to be, I thought you might kind of have to cook. Yeah, I'm really good with a stir fry, yeah. which is just basically throwing things in a pan and going for it. <laughs> That's about the extent. I did learn how to make a really good bolognese that yeah. Aliash's mom passed down because Aliash is my husband. My yeah. fa- his favorite dish is a good spaghetti bolognese. Yeah, great um, dish. But other than that, I'm really trying... I'll tell you later, but I'm really trying to explore my cooking capabilities. Okay, yeah. all right. <laughs> Now, are you a sweet or savoury person? I can't choose, you know. I don't like spicy. A lot of people think Cuban food is spicy, and it's not at all. Yeah. It's a lot more savoury. So I love the savoury, but I also love a really good dessert. A lot of herbs? More um, more herbaceous than spice-led? It's more garlicky. Yeah. Garlicky and oniony based. Um, a really nice, like, I mean, please tell me if I brutalize this, but it's like a red type of aioli sauce right. that they put on their seafood. They've yeah. got a really good, like, I think it's like Creole shrimp, similar yeah. dish to Creole shrimp. Yeah. So all that stuff I love, yeah. But I do love a dessert. And garlic and onions. Garlic and onions garlic. is my favorite. Even, even if I don't know how to cook, I dip in an onion and garlic at home. As a chef, <laughs> it's pretty much the base for is it? all kind of cooking. You see, Paul got that right. You yes, see? You I got did. that in the dish. <laughs> now we're we're going to come on to the dinner party, right? Yeah. But we want to have like an absolute killer guest list. Oof. Okay, alive or dead, fictional or real, it's totally up to you, Jeanette. Like, what? What? Who do you want there? 
Okay, the question, how many can I invite? As many as you want. Oh, gosh, okay. Bearing in mind we are on a bit of a time limit, but yeah, as many as, yeah, she, yeah, as, many yeah. as, as, many as you want. I feel like I would have to invite my parents and brother and sister, number one. Lovely. Um, I miss them terribly. Yeah. I've not seen them in so long. Yeah. And I'm really, really close to mom and dad. My mom, anybody that meets my mom falls in love with my mom. Yeah. She talks like this, you know? She goes, oh my God, Jenny, you're doing the podcast with Paul Ainsley. This is amazing, you know? <laughs> yeah. So she's got to be there. She's the life of the party. I and I love how she called me Paul Ainsley. Yeah. I love Sorry. that. <laughs> My mom would do that. Okay. So yeah. I'm being realistic. I'm seeing in character. Um, do you know how many times though that I had a, like a, a chef, good good friend of mine, his name's Sat Bain, has got an amazing restaurant in Nottingham and he brought his three sisters down to Cornwall to our restaurant and the whole way down they actually thought that they were coming to meet Ainsley Harriet. Oh, I do you know he's lovely. I met him. He's a nice man. Have you man. met Sat Bain? Yeah, 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 yeah. We love him. Yeah, Sorry so, about uh, that, Paul. So, <laughs> but it, 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 it happens a lot. Yes. Well, my mom, my dad, uh, my brother and my sister, because I yeah. love them to bits. Um, my husband, Aliash, because he's yeah. a riot. He's yeah. so much fun at a dinner party. He's the guy that's more concerned with what we're going to be drinking with our food. Yeah. He's that one. Good. Um, but two people that I would love to have that I've always wanted to ask questions and intrigued with and have a million and one things that I would want to learn about is Audrey Hepburn yeah. and Fred Astaire. Because brilliant, brilliant guests. Yeah, she's pretty epic, uh, Audrey. She's kind of my style icon. She's someone that I really turn to a lot when it comes to, um, you know, what she was all about. She was quite a, a beautiful actress, beautiful dancer. She started with ballet and then went into acting. She did a lot of humanitarian work across the world. Just a really beautiful human being, uh, quite a classy woman. Um, they always say you're either a Marilyn girl or an Audrey girl. Yeah. And I'm definitely an Audrey girl. She's yeah. someone that I really admire a lot. And then Fred Astaire because, I mean, I'm a big fan of Gene Kelly and Sid, Sid Charisse and all these iconic dancers from yeah. the golden era of Hollywood. But he was the one that all of those guys looked up to. Yeah. And uh, Ali Ash and I, we did two years of our own tour called Remembering Fred. And it was literally celebrating Fred Astaire. So to sit at a dinner party with him and have a great conversation about his career, how he got into it, what his inspiration was. I'd have a million and one questions. Yeah, for sure. And who would be like early or who would be late? Late? Probably me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably me. If you ask Ali Ash, he'll definitely agree. I'm always, I, I run on Cuban time, which is like Caribbean time, you know, yeah. we're always a little bit late to things. Um, uh, not going to like that. That, that Seychelles war gene is in me is as it? well. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, kind of, Quite yeah. relaxed, right? Yeah. No pressure. <laughs> Just when you come, we always say in my family, if we want people to show up at the house at five o'clock, we say about 4.30 yeah. so they can start arriving for five. Yeah, drove my dad nuts, but yeah, my mum has no clue for time. <laughs> She's, it's, yeah, it's her own time. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm the same. I'm in the same vibe as your mom. She's cool. We like your mom. We yeah. like your mom. <laughs> uh, and the dress code. Oh, see, I love a theme party, you know? Yeah, it's got to be themed, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I do. And I'll, I'll explain why, but I feel because of the dishes that I would want to introduce to the party, it has to be like Tropicana Cuba themed. Yeah. So I would want florals, feathers, shorts, sunglasses, anything that makes you feel like you're in the best holiday retreat in Cuba. Yeah. For arrivals. Yeah, relax, quite relax. I'd love to see like what Fred Astaire would wear to something like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> So we've got Audrey Hepburn, yes, Fred Astaire, mm. Ali Ash, and your parents. Yeah, and my brother and my sister. And your brother and your sister. Because they are epic. We love my brother and my sister. That's a fantastic That's a nice party. lineup, That's right? A, and yourself. Yeah. You need to be invited. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You know, I bet along. you're the only guest that will ever, ever say that. No, I, I want guarantee. you to come along. You need to meet my family. You have to meet Audrey and Fred. They're you know, like I, good I, friends of mine. I'd like to cook. Oh, please. I'd oh love to cook. That would be iconic. Yeah. That would be the moment. <laughs> Right, we're going to move on to the first course. Oof, okay. Are you ready? I think so. Yeah? Yeah. What's your starter? So, my dad, right, he actually works in the food industry. And yeah. he promotes and sells a very, very peculiar and delicious croqueta. Yeah. Croquette. I love them. Do you? Yes. We've oh. got, we've got, so, we have a... We have a restaurant called Cafe Reggiano, which uh -huh. is very like Mediterranean um, led. Nice. Uh, in the, and we, uh, yeah, we got so we got croccatas on with um, a, a birico ham. 
Yes. Uh, and then we just finished them with another slice of um, beautiful Iberico ham and lots of aged Parmesan. Oh, my God. That sounds amazing. Yeah, and they are Can we incredible. just put that in my dinner party? Yeah. No problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, a, it's a basically quite similar because we've got different types of croquettes. Yeah. They're a lot smaller yeah. uh, than the, like, the bigger ones that you would get served in, in a typical like Spanish tapas yeah. style restaurant. Uh, but they've got cheese. They've got chicken. My personal favorite is ham and cheese mixed. Yeah. That's exactly what ours are. Shut up. They're I incredible. am coming. I am coming, Paul. You, you honestly, <laughs> you, you have to come down and try these. Uh, they're, they're like, yeah. And they're perfect, right? So you get like two yeah. of them in a little little starter portion and it's perfect. Yeah, well, we, I'm sure you're a big fan of like small plates. I am, I love it. It's very, very on trend right now in food in this country. But as we know, like San Sebastian, Barcelona, like that kind of pinchos or tapas mm-hmm. is, I got to say, probably my absolute favourite way of eating these days mm. than, than just lots of small Gambas, croquettas, like yeah. just gorgeous small plates. Well, I'm a small person. I yeah. mean, I'm five foot. <laughs> I'm the tiniest dancer to ever be on Strictly Come Dancing, I would say. And I eat like a bird. That's what my dad says. <laughs> He's like, you just pick at food. You just like nibble on things here and there. And so that's why I like tapas because I like kind of changing my taste buds. I get bored if I have the same thing for too long. Yeah. So tapas gives you that kind of option to try lots of different things. So yeah. I'm I'm in with you, Paul. 100. percent So basically, ham and cheese croquettes. Ham and cheese croquettes. Uh, inspired choice. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And is there a memory link to that? Is, does that remind you of growing my up? Yeah, my dad. Yeah. My dad. Because my dad. That's what he sells. He yeah. sells um, croquettes to lots of different restaurants and lots of different like massive like publics or you know it's kind of like the Tesco's and the Sainsbury's of the USA basically he sells to all of them his croquettes and we grew up as kids like that was a huge side dish at any kid's birthday party we would have literally trays of croquetas coming out and they'd be like cheese croquetas or just chicken croquetas or the ham and cheese croquetas and you would like pick and choose the one that you wanted so it just reminds me a lot of growing up my dad and like kids birthday parties as a family yeah yeah what would you like to drink with that Oh, I mean, we need to start soft, don't we? Yeah. I mean, I think one of the most famous drinks is a Cuba Libre. Yeah. Which is basically just rum rum and coke, isn't it? Yeah. But I don't think you can go straight into that. So we could start with just a really nice Prosecco, you know? Cubans like a nice little Prosecco. Keep it simple. Nothing too fancy. Do you want to say I had champagne in my head, but like exactly what you're saying, because I think it's quite rich. Yeah. And that would work. For me, that would... Just cut that nicely. Yeah. You lock the acidity in Prosecco. Yeah, and champagne. it's got like the bubbles in it, so it'll go nice with the crispiness of the croquette. Like yeah. it's not a heavy drink. You're not going to have it and then feel smashed after the starter. Yeah. You know, we got to ease into it. So Prosecco uh, over Cava then in Cuba. So you, in, in Cuba, you drink more Prosecco than, say, Cava? No, no, that's me. That's you. <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah. That's just a bit of me, Paul. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> We're going Cuban theme. We're like Cuba meets Jeanette. Yeah, yeah I love it. I love it. Uh, now this is this is you know this podcast is not just about food and drink it's also about music mm. now this I'm really excited what track would you pair with ham and cheese croquettos and well, a sparkling glass of prosecco well actually when you put it like that it makes total sense because yeah. before I'm like I don't know why it works but now when you said it like that I think it really T- works totally works the song of choice for me would be Frank Sinatra's Come Fly With Me. Because I want to take you on a journey to Cuba, yeah. you know? Yeah. And when you get on an airplane, first thing you get is a little glass of champagne or a little yeah. glass of Prosecco, right? You're on, the tra- you're on the plane and you're flying away to another destination. You're like, oh, are we going to go next? Well, we're about to land in Cuba on the main, right? Yeah. So we're going to come fly away together. I also feel like Fred and Audrey would really appreciate that song. Yeah. It's a bit of their era. Yeah. And my dad is a big jazz fan. He loves jazz music. I grew up listening to Frank Sinatra my whole life. Uh, so come fly with me by Frank Sinatra would be the the song for the starter dish. Brilliant. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. I'm there. there. I'm oh. there. I'm there. Yeah. You 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 you've sold you've sold it to me. Before we go on to the main course, I've got I've got to ask you a question. I'm really hoping you can you might actually inspire something here. Okay. Because I, I get the fit your your food choices are going to be great. Okay. So this summer, um, I'm launching our first ever food and music festival. 
in, in Cornwall. You're speaking like literally heaven to my ears. Okay. <laughs> the combination. So first of all, <laughs> would you like, would you and Ali Ash like to come? I'd love to invite you. A hundred percent. We're already there. We're groupies. Okay. We're knocking. Fantastic. <laughs> but it was in, a lot of the inspiration has come from a film called Chef. Have you seen it? No. You've got to see it, right? Okay. So it's set in Miami. Um, no way. And it's a chef that is a brilliant superstar fine dining chef, but he gets a really bad review and he takes it to heart. But his wife is Cuban. Ex-wife is Cuban. Yeah, we're feisty. Um, and <laughs> she... She doesn't like her, right? She's No, she, but she's, she's absolutely lovely, tries to help him. And she says, look, just take some time out and go and get a food truck because you know how big food trucks are in America. Yes. So he uh, basically does grilled Cuban cheese sandwiches and it just flies, right? So he's just driving around Miami, he reconnects with his son because his son lives with his ex-Cuban wife and they reconnect and it's just such a feel-good film. You've got to see it, I need right? to watch that. And it played such a part in sort of inspiring like the Travelling Feast because all of our food offering is going to be trailers or trucks that's a, it's a really big trend isn't it the food trucks yeah, it's yeah. like made a massive yeah. comeback recently and as good as the trucks got to look but what's most importantly what's coming out of it's got to be delicious right yeah so two weeks ago we bought our first food truck nice right? it's, it's absolutely beautiful and i want to do the most amazing grilled Cuban oh cheese sandwiches. Oh my god! Sandwiches. Please invite me to that. As Can well? you give me? Is 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 that is is is, is Cuban grilled Cuban cheese sandwiches like grilled something Cuban you can cheese, relate to? Yeah, they are. I think you know grilled Cuban any sa- sandwiches, Cuban sandwiches in general. Yeah. I mean, have you ever like a proper Cuban sandwich, which is what we used to have as kids growing up, was quite thick. Yeah, there was a lot of meat in there. Yeah, melted cheese. Lots of butter, yeah. Lettuce and tomato. All the veggies were like, a, uh, maybe. Yeah. It was about the meat. It was about like the cheese and the meat being all like in one massive nice. They called it a la plancha, which yeah. is like the. Well, yeah. I don't even. Like, I'm such no, a bad I know. Cook. No, I know. You know what what I mean. Yeah, we, we call it. We call it a plancha. Yeah. So yeah. We're, so we've. We well, so the first one we've come up with is actually kind of more inspired by a New York sandwich called a Reuben. Okay, so cool. So like pastrami. Uh, it's similar, yeah. Sauerkraut or shukrut, you know, like the thinly sliced pickled yeah, cabbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And then we've done like a blend of free cheeses, but exactly like what you're saying, we cook it on the plancher yeah. with a press on top. But the little tip that they do in America, which really works, is they spread mayonnaise on top of the bread. After. Because if you think, no, when cooking. Oh, really? Because if you think about it, it's basically eggs, it's eggs and oil. So it just caramelizes and goes even crispier. Oh, wow. I'm all in. So a Cuban, so just for my reference, and a Cuban sandwich is basically lots of meat Meaty. and lots and loads of gooey Greasy. cheese. Greasy. Heavy cheese. Chris, yeah. Do you like them? I love them. Yes. They're called pan con biste. Right. Pan con biste. That's pan what we call it. Pan again. con biste. Pan con biste. Yeah, pan con biste. It's basically, it means, in, literally translated, it's bread with steak. Bread with steak. Yeah. So it's very thin, thin, thin steak or ham or pork, whichever kind of meats you want to put in there with cheese, lots of butter, heavily dipped in like all that goodness. That's not good for you at all, but delicious. But it's a festival. <laughs> it's a one off. Yeah. And, and that's what you want when you're going to watch yeah. great music. Yeah. yeah. Right. Main mm. course. The main course has to be pollo a la plancha, which is, again, it's a basically a very thin, thin, thin chicken, chicken breast, grilled. Yeah. Uh, but specifically, like, they pound the chicken breast to make it really, 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 really thin. Yeah. And then they just put on top of it onions and loads of garlic. They call it mojo, yeah. which is like a specific sauce that's made mostly of garlic and yes. onions and stuff. Yeah, I know. Oh, it. it's so good. Yeah, and there's a, is it mojo rojo as well? Yeah, there's yeah. a mojo rojo, which is yeah. a more like reddish one. Yeah. But this one is just mojo because it's really heavy in garlic. And then a side dish of white rice with black beans yeah. and fried plantains. Platanitos maduro. Oh, that's how we say it. Platano Maduro, they're the best. I am, honestly, I'm loving your choices. Yeah. We, 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 I'm we really like the unhealthy, same Paul, food. but it's yes, so good. It's so good. <laughs> now, drinks. See, there's the Cuba Libre time. That's the rum and coke. Yeah, yeah. It's, a yeah. Heavy, it's quite a heavy dish, actually. Yeah. If you get too much of any of it, it's quite a dense 
dense meal. Yeah. So I think the Cuba Libre is, is just right for it because you yeah. can start having a drink, but you have all the heavy food to cope with the rum and coke yeah. they're going to be having on the side. Yeah. Now what I you know what I'm seeing now in the in the British food scene is mm. like we've kind of gone massive you know almost under like a, a revolution in gin mm. um coffee is taken so seriously now like everyone is a coffee snob yeah, um and basically it's, and and, it, and it's good because it's like it's just, just that demand for quality great ingredients but what we're seeing now as well in my industry is now rum it isn't just the kind of half a dozen rums that everyone knows rum is going like gin tequila yeah uh, so like yeah rum you know there are i mean We've got we have got some fantastic rums at the Do restaurant. you? Yeah, you. So would, you need to introduce me, right? Because yeah. all I know is Cuba Libre. I have no yeah. idea what the rum is that goes. <laughs> oh, we'll, we, I can, we we've got we can introduce you to some. Well, we in fact on one of our desserts we, we use this rum for we do a rum barber. <gasps> um, nice. Yeah, it's beautiful, and when we change it with what fruit is of the now. So right now it's Cornish strawberries. Uh, nice. And then we put, and then we just make a cream with vanilla and laps, um, lapsang shushong tea. So when are we doing this? So when when, when you <laughs> can we do it after the podcast? When you come down to the festival, <laughs> you can. Uh, we'll get you a table. Okay, all right? nice, nice. But ru- yeah, rum is. It is. I know what you mean. It's for a long time in the UK. It's just quite, it was almost a bit like I a lot pe- of a rum and coke. Yeah, people see it as a holiday liquor. But yes, you can have it, it all the time. Really. Yeah. I mean, I'm going up in Miami. I, mean, I guess because I grew up in a kind of holiday destination in Miami but having rum was just something we just did all the time it wasn't yeah. like a it wasn't a holiday thing it was like a way of life for yeah. us you know yeah yeah love it love it song choice <sighs> okay it's the so main course what song goes with that dish? I I had massive struggle with this question because yeah. you're speaking to a dancer yeah who listens to music constantly yeah I've uh, given you my favorite dish in the world that yeah. reminds me of home and my family and my culture and being Cuban yeah what song is ever gonna match that it's almost near impossible there is one album right it's called the Buena Vista Social Club right right that whole album was actually recorded live in the Buena Vista Social Club in Havana Cuba yeah so they use actual musicians and actual like artists from Cuba to make that album and every time I hear that album it just takes me right back to like being in Miami with my family my grandmother giving us way too much food more than we can actually even eat (laughs) and just listening to Spanish like language just my aunts and uncles and everybody speaking Spanish and when I hear that music when I hear them speaking in my language it just feels so good so I would want Audrey and Fred to and yourself because you're also a guest remember yeah I would want you to experience that proper Cuban feeling of what it's like to step into Cuba through food and music. And I think that that album, the whole album, I can't pick a song. There's this one, my favorite song is probably Chan Chan, but it's a little bit too chill for the main course. But all the other songs in the album, literally you can pick any song in the album and it's perfect for the main course. Buena Vista Social Club. Do you know what? When I was asked to do this podcast, yeah. like just list about halfway through when you're explaining that, you could see like like slight like almost you got a little bit emotional. Yeah, because it means and, a lot. And you can and that's for me what is so special about food and music. Mm. Um, and it, it there is they are so connected and yeah, they are yeah. two massively emotive things. And that that's really cool. Because if you think about really it, cool. music and food, for me personally, are the two things that it doesn't matter what language you speak, what part of the world you're from, yeah. uh, who, who, what your background is, it doesn't, none of that matters. When you taste good food with good company or you listen to a really great song, even yeah. if you don't know the lyrics to it, you just feel something, you yeah. just connect to it and you don't have to be from that specific part of the world or speak that language or even have that same culture, but you feel connected through the food or through music. Yeah. And I think it's so, so true for, for all of us, for me yeah. as a dancer and for yourself as a chef, for yeah. sure. No, couldn't agree more. Dessert. Oh. We are at <laughs> we are at dessert. What is it, Jeanette? What's dessert? I'm I, and I ple- Please don't disappoint because you Why? have been you have been fantastic <laughs> so far. Like, like, like no fantastic. pressure, no pressure. <laughs> um, right. So my, I mean, I love dessert. I've got a sweet tooth. Yeah. I always leave room for dessert whenever yeah. I go to a restaurant. <laughs> but my dessert for this specific meal, sticking to the Cuba theme and my family and yeah. the culture, I would have to say is a really good flan. Right. 
my grandmother's flan. I actually asked her to send me the recipe before our chat today, but they're on Miami time, so yeah. it's going to take a second. I'll give it to you as soon as she sends it across. She just makes the world's most incredible flan. Uh, it's not dulce de leche, which is a caramel. Yeah, it carom- what yeah is it? B- basically um, a cooked caramel. Yeah. Uh, condensed milk. That's, yeah, that's it's cooked. not that. Yeah. She does it with some type of caramel. It's so, it honestly feels like butter when you slice it. Yeah. It's not spongy. It's extremely sweet. The top is not like, um, it's not hard at all. It's soft on the top and it feels like melted caramel all across the top. But when you slice through it, it feels like you're cutting through butter. It has that density in it. And the taste is insane. And the the, the, the case around the outside. What is, same as the top. Same as the top. Same as the top. It looks exactly across. It's round. Yeah. She makes it really round, like a big round portion of it. And then the top and the sides all look exactly the same. And then when you cut it into it, then you pull it out and you see it honestly looks like butter, but it tastes like heaven. It I, tastes like heaven. I can taste it now. Oh, it's, it's so good. So it's so good. <laughs> Literally, when I fly back home, she always makes it just for me because she knows it's my favorite thing that she does is the flan. Just incredible about your menu. Uh, there's not a bit of quinoa in sight. <laughs> there's, there's nothing healthy there's, to <laughs> do, do you know what? It's proper, proper cooking. Yeah. 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 Heavy, you, sugary, gr- carb filled, double fried. Yeah. And the fact that you've invited me is is, epic. is just epic. <laughs> I, honestly, I absolutely love it. Yeah, love it. That is that is a great great dessert. <laughs> now, what would you what would you pair with that? Cuban cortado. Cuban, yeah. like we have our very specific ways of making Cuban espressos. Yeah. So nowadays, if you ask for an espresso, it's just a quite sh- a shot of black coffee. Yeah. Really, really high. A volume of caffeine in it and it's yeah. strong but Cubans take it to the next level we do cortadito style and cortadito basically is that you make the, the espresso yeah. but then you take like two or three it's very high in sugar take two or three spoons of sugar and you take a little bit of the coffee that you've actually just made Yeah. dip it in and stir it stir it stir it till it becomes a bit of a foam right yeah almost yeah then you put the espresso shot in it yeah and it will keep you awake <laughs> for hours but the coffee tastes like heaven again it's more of a creamy coffee more than just like a liquidy espresso because once you put the coffee into the that kind of mixed yeah. sugar it creates this like of obviously super sugary taste but it creates like a i don't even know how to explain it it's just thicker than a normal espresso. I know exactly what you say. Yeah, so you're removing some of that bitterness. Yeah. Uh, you're then so you then pour a little bit in there. So it's almost like a. It almost goes into a paste. Then and yes. the, but basically you're adding loads of air in there, which is what makes it mm-hmm. foamy. Um, so like sugar, it, like rum, like that kind. Of, that's a massive part of I'm massive. guessing of Cuban of yeah. Cuban food. I like mean, sweetness. They, and we've got. I mean, like my grandmother and my parents will kill me for not knowing this, but it's a very specific coffee maker yeah do you know that old school I think Italians use it a lot where it's like silver yeah. and it's got like and you two put, bits to it yeah you put it on the stove top you've got to use that one yeah you've got to use that one yeah. to make it and Cafe Bustelo is the the coffee that our family uses to make the best 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 coffee yeah it's like a orange yellow and red case and it's called Cafe Bustelo and you use that with sugar stir it you dip it and it's the best 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 little drink next to a flan it's perfect do you do chilled coffees in Cuba? Do you like Do you like chilled coffee? No, it's all about espressos in Cuba. Cortadito yeah. is the way to go. You don't do it. I mean, it is cold, but for that we've got the rum. <laughs> okay. I just, I've just, I was, I, you've inspired me with a Cuban sandwich. I've got a chilled coffee idea in my oh, head, and you? I just wanted some inspiration. Yeah, <laughs> maybe you can mix that really high sugar with yeah. ice and yeah. make something delicious as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's about making a cold cortadito for those summer months. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so, sounds amazing. <laughs> now, song. It's uh, the, it's, it, we're kind of, it's the last course. What's, what's, I mean, don't get me wrong, this party's not finishing. This no, is just trust food. me, there's an we're, after party. We're then going to go into a proper <laughs> Cuban disco. But uh, this is just for the food. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think this song, I thought a lot about the the song because obviously I'm a massive Gloria Estefan fan and Celia Cruz fan. They're yeah. like Cuban icons. I grew up listening to them my whole life. Yeah. I almost I almost wanted to use them for the main dish and I thought, no, 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 let's keep it classy, Jeanette, with a Buena Vista Social Club. Um, but when it came to the dessert, you want everybody at your dinner party to feel good. 
and relate and listen to a song that they go like, oh, I love this song. And because the flan in my eyes is literally heaven and the cortadito feels like so sweet and delicious and I've got Fred Astaire as my guest, yeah. the song has to be cheek to cheek. Heaven, I'm in heaven. Uh, yeah. And Just my heart listeners, beats so. If you, if you could be my ears right now. <laughs> You could be my ears. <laughs> like. I feel like you have a bite of that flan and that song comes on and you're like, oh my God, this is literally heaven. <laughs> Do you know, on my playlist, I've got a wicked house remix of that song. Do you? That you just said, yeah, just, just, just putting it out there. Oh, just I'm going to listen to it. You have to show me afterwards. I'll <laughs> yeah. listen to it. Yeah. I love, cl- I love jazz. I love all kinds of music, but I feel like my go-to music tends to be Fred is, you know, the oldies, like Frank Sinatra's, Nat King Cole's, Natalie Cole's, like Ella yeah. Fitzgerald. I love all that, like, old, classic, beautiful jazz. Yeah. And yeah. I'd love that vibe to come in, but I threw in the Buena Vista Social Club to bring you to Cuba for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> Now I've got we're, we're we're coming to the end, right? Okay. And I've got a question for you, which we spoke about before we went before we went live. Okay. And um, so you you wanted to ask me about how Michelin stars work, how is that right? You, but you, you ask the question because do you know what? It's a question that I get asked. It's a genuine lots. question. How do you get a Michelin star? Like, how yeah. is the process? How does that happen? Because every time I set foot into a Michelin star restaurant, yeah. there is a certain level that's yeah. it just steps up a notch to yeah. any other restaurant. But how do you get it? How do you go about it it's consistency mm. i suppose that when being able when, to do it again yeah. and again and again so when you go to like you just said you just automatically feel that when you walk into that michelin star restaurant like what you said you can just feel it's 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 another level there's a professionalism but that sometimes people think that doesn't mean that it's like stiff or or stark or anything yeah. it just means that like there is a group of individuals who are working you know at the top of their game and working very very hard just like being you know a top professional dancer like yourself and I suppose from a chef's point of view it's just that it's just that recognition that you I remember when we we won our we won our Michelin star in 2012 congratulations thank you and (laughs) it was I can't that that day will live with me forever because I remember walking to work that morning after the news and you you know your phone's going crazy and everything like that and like when I finally you get back to actually what it is you you want to do it was just it felt different finishing that dish the first dish of lunch that mm. day the first dish of the day going out to the first customers it was like all of a sudden it just it felt just felt different, different. It was, oh. We were no longer one of hundreds of thousands of restaurants in the UK we were part of something that is that he's recognised. Just, just put that, you on another um, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 that's but it, no, they will they will find you. That's amazing. They will know and they will hear about restaurants or restaurants within hotels or anywhere that there's a great eating experience. So when did you f- actually find out? Or did you get a phone call? Well, it was, it was so ours was um was was I suppose really really special, like because. It was the first year. It always comes out in January, mm-hmm. and it was the first year that they were moving it to October. Okay. So there was there was an announcement in January, and then there was announcements in October that year. And I got a phone call from another chef at stupid o'clock in the morning that had come up on his <laughs> Twitter feed. Always the way. <laughs> I think it was the twenty seventh of September, and the guide was meant to be out on the 9th of October. I, I think it was about that. And obviously they were working on it, mm-hmm. but it had, it. Whoever was working on it, it had got lit. It, it was there to see online. They, it wasn't behind, like online. Oh it was gosh, it so gone slipped. online, so it slipped online. Oh. So I, 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 I'm like, is this real? Is this real? So <laughs> my wife, like Emma, it's like it's like half seven in the morning. Emma's like, we're we're looking at each other. We actually look online, and it says like you know Paul Haynes at number six, one Michelin star. And I'm like, this, this, this I, I can't get my head around it. So I rang up, like, rang up um, Tom Kerridge, and he said, "Look, here's the phone number for Michelin HQ." Um, he was like, "Just ring them at nine o'clock." So I, you can imagine, like, half seven <laughs> till nine o'clock. Do I want to call now? Do I wait? Yeah. <laughs> and 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 I and I like made this phone call, and the guy that answered the phone, it was like he was part of meant to be part of this story. So he was like, you know, "Good morning, Michelin." Um, oh, you know, head off, head office, HQ, whatever. Exciting. 
my gosh. So I was like, oh, my name's Paul Ainsworth and um, I've got... Not Irish, Ainsley. Uh, not Ainsley. <laughs> Paul, Paul I, 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 to be honest, I'm surprised I got my name right. Oh, I was that nervous. Nervous, yeah. And uh, I said, my name's Paul Ainsworth. I've got a restaurant in Cornwall called Number Six and it says that we've won a Michelin star. And he paused and he was like, does it, young man? Like that. And oh I was God. like... This is like out of a movie, yeah. by the way. <laughs> so, like... I, so I said, uh, yeah, it does. He said, well, if it says it in black and white, young man, then I'd take that as good as you've got a Michelin star. My wife and me just burst into tears. Oh I literally gosh. was just like stunned because we, we moved to Cornwall. It was, you know, something that we really wanted to like work towards for me and oh. the team. And then it was just... What a moment. Phenomenal. phenomenal. By the way, I love Cornwall. Do you? I it's do. an amazing place, isn't I, it? I stayed down there for a couple of weeks, actually, because when I did the People Strictly, which was a one-off show that they did for individuals that had done incredible work in their communities, yeah. the gentleman that I danced with, his name was Phil, he had a children's program down in Cornwall in yeah. St. Ives. Yeah. And I spent six weeks down there and I fell in love with it. It's such a beautiful part of the UK. Uh, St. Ives is beautiful. Yeah. So where I am, Padstow, is very much like St. Ives, but smaller. Okay, it's so, it's a so gorgeous. It's town like that, it's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it really, I don't know, I really like being down there. I think I like the water as well. It's yeah. so close to the water, which is nice. Yeah, it is, it's, it's yeah. beautiful. So, based on that little bit of... Um, info. Info <laughs> I've just given you about how Michelin stars work. My okay. final question to you, Jeanette, is which musical artist would you award a Michelin star to? Oh, gosh. This is a big question. I've got my obsession yeah. with a certain person. I think this individual has really pushed the boundaries. Yeah. He's really changed his whole sound and his whole look. He's very inclusive. He's just the coolest guy I've seen recently doing anything. And don't judge me because people have their opinions on it, but I would give it to Harry Styles. Do you know? Honestly. Fantastic. I feel like he has really pushed forward on this yeah. kind of, he was the first man to appear with a skirt and a dress on, on, a, on the cover of a magazine. He was just like, I love everything that he's about. His last album, Fine Line, is on repeat in my house. I listen yeah. to it all the time. Um, so I would give it to Harry. <laughs> I know what you know. It's one of those things, isn't it, with music? It's so subjective. And I, I remember talking to a certain person, and very nervous to answer their um, their oh, questions really? when they were quizzing me about music, <laughs> looking at me across the table because um, you feel that like they're music gurus, right? They <laughs> are. I'm going to say what I'm going to say, <laughs> but I, I complete, I completely and utterly agree. One, yeah. I think his music's fantastic, and I think to be a part of something that's so commercial and massive yeah and then he's to, really speaking you yeah. know he's really making a statement and yeah. really speaking and i really appreciate that and he he's feels quite both. he feels he's so young but he feels quite old doesn't he, he feels yeah. like like of a of a of an era, an era gone yeah, by yeah, 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 i know yeah, yeah I i'm know not dancing mean. on strictly anymore but if i would have i would have yeah. loved to dance with him on strictly yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is very cool. He seems very, cool. Very, very Never cool. met him. Maybe one day, Paul. Maybe yeah. one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeanette, I have had the best time. Me too. I have had the best time. Me I think too. your your dishes are incredible. Thank you. Um, and I will cook <laughs> these dishes for you. I think your guest list was incredible. Your music, everything. And as a chef, I would love to eat your dishes. Oh, They're brilliant. please. I don't know if I can cook them for you, but I can definitely <laughs> give it a good go. Have you enjoyed yourself? I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for having me. I think this is Thank you. literally the best idea to combine really great food, a really phenomenal Michelin star chef uh, talking about music and something that you're so passionate about food in one. It just makes sense, right? It's like yeah. this should have been done a long time ago. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I'd love you to come down to Travelling oh, Faces this summer. trust me. I'm g I can't wait for this cheese yeah. sandwich that you're going to be introducing all of us to soon. I might <laughs> name it after you. <gasps> don't I'm, do that. I don't, will don't. call it. I will. I, do you know what? I think. I think it has to be done. I think it has to be done. <laughs> uh, I will really be honoured. I will very gladly accept that if you do that for me. Thank you. <laughs>